All right, welcome to Culture Science, where we're creating cultures around valuing people, where everyone feels valued. This is lesson number nine. We're gonna be focusing on these three key stakeholder relationships that form every organization, the self, the team, and the community. And what this looks like is a relationship between these three components of an organization. And it seems kind of obvious that these are the three components of the organization, but what's not obvious is that what has to happen is there has to be a virtuous circle of paying value forward for that, the energy and the valuing to continue but between each one of these teams because it becomes reciprocal. The individual gives to the team, the team gives to the community, and the community gives back to the individual and the teams. So that's how it works in a cycle. And this helps you to think through like, how do we create a financial outcome for organizations with an organization? And this is how you do it. And how does that financial uh, remuneration actually end up looking like valuing? Well, this is the cycle that it goes around like that. And it creates value for each one of those key stakeholders within an organization. So this is what it looks like. We, we're talking about paying it forward in a virtuous cycle. And we talked about the neuroscience behind this, that there's actually ser serotonergic processes. When someone feels valued, you're actually going to increase your, your energy or your output, your creativity, your ethical involvement. All of those things increase when we treat each other in a valued virtuous circle. So that's what we're trying to do here. And I'm just trying to point out that these are the three core relational groupings that we're going to be focusing on in VP culture creation. So let's look at the individual. We're going to look at it from a positive and a negative standpoint in each one of these groups. So on a positive level, if an individual comes from, from a, a good self disposition where they have, they've been valuing themselves, they've come from valuing relationships from their families and other communities, they're going to bring valuing energy, that serotonergic disposition to the organization. So those people that are high in that, those are the people that you want leading your teams. And that individual is going to bring more energy in life to everyone that's around them. That's uh, the principle of those high in serotonin, those individuals high in serotonin have a positive effect of those all around them. So those are the type of people that we want versus the negative uh, aspect, which is somebody who, who has an entitlement, who's complaining, where's mine? And they treat themselves like a commodity. They treat their life and their time like a commodity and they treat others like a commodity. So when people are not seeing that they're creating these experiences for others, which is what we'll look like at in valuing science, that they can create that as much as they have energy to do. So what we're looking for is individuals that can bring that kind of energy and that kind of life to uh, their teams directly. So if an individual is really good at doing that, they're going to be a great team member and they're going to be able to, their team as a whole is going to be able to pay that valuing forward to the community that they serve. So a great team is going to have all this sort of synergistic energy. They're going to be creative, innovative. They're not going to have turnover. They're going to be honest. They're going to be engaging with candor about projects and processes. And they'll be able to do more quality work than a team that's not engaged in that valuing. Again, you have to have that critical team leader, that individual that brings the serotonin levels up for everyone else within the organization by valuing others, not by being somebody who's either egotistical or tyrannical. We want somebody who's giving and, and creating what we call um, social affiliative behaviors and, and relationships. So that's what the team can do. And if they pay it forward to the community, what does that look like? Well, when the community gets a hold of that kind of valuing, they reciprocate. They feel great. They've said, I really like that restaurant. I really like that organization. I really like working with these people. Um, when I call them, they're, they're engaging. When I, when I ask for something, they're responsive. And sometimes it's even when something goes wrong and your team handles it really, really well with, with clarity and with candor and with consistency, they're going to be telling stories about how this team handled this problem with, with great service and they really valued me and made me felt uh, valued in a difficult situation. So the community will reciprocate with their energy, with finances, with thank yous, with energy in the community saying, you got to go visit this place. 
you got to go work with this organization. That's word of mouth. That's worth gold. And um, so that's what the community. So each one of these groups. Now, what can it look like when it's a negative community, when a community feels like it's being taken advantage of, when the com community feels like you're just extracting price from us and not giving us value and service? Then the community will start having negative feedback for your organization. You're going to start losing market share and it will be a, a negative cycle. So what we want this to be is that positive, virtuous, forward, uh, paying it forward cycle within organizations. So again, we've got the, the individual paying it forward to the team, creating value for the team, the team creating values for the community. So those are the three core stakeholders. We focus on teams because they are the core energy creators within an organization. So we overlay this with what we talked about last week, the emotional science, the valuing science, and the personality science. Those three skills are what give your individuals and your teams the ability to pay it forward to uh, the community and the community will reciprocate with their own thanks and fandom that will create this positive flowing cycle that will lead to a VP culture. So we've got these sort of concentric circles that are interacting with each other. So I'm trying to give you a visual picture of how we need to work together in valuing these, the valuing being exchanged between these three key stakeholding groups. So it's a core concept and we're going to be discussing how you apply these sciences to those three groups. That's how those um, two concepts interact. So we even do some engagement testings using this test called the Utrecht Workforce Engagement Survey. And being educated in Europe, I, I like this test. And this test actually has a lot of good virtues going for it because what it does is it tests for emotional engagement, focus, and uh, determinedness. Because so these are all emotional responses for someone who feels valued. So if someone innately feels valued, they're going to have these kind of emotional account outcomes and responses towards their work. So that's what it measures. And it's an independently verified workforce survey. So the organization that created the survey is not the same organization that's making money off of it. So when a consultant comes to you and say, hey, you need to use this survey that I created, it's valid and I make money off of it. That's not your, your gold standard in research. So I really think this is a great test to be using to be able to engage your work face because we're measuring that life giving energy. Is it being moved forward is exactly what this test is measuring. So ultimately, what we want to see is this kind of cycle creating valued responses between people. OK, so that everyone feels valued within your organization, your individuals, your team and your community without one of those care without one of these stakeholder relationships, without the community, you wouldn't be an organization. You would either run out of money and run out of people to serve. You wouldn't have a reason for being. If you just had teams that's, that um, weren't there, just a group of individuals, you wouldn't be nearly as powerful as an organization that has teams involved in it. So each one of these things are critical to exist and to relate well to each other within an organization. So let's look at a little bit of the science. So we're going to look at each one of those stakeholders from a scientific perspective. So both from a negative and positive standpoint, um, loneliness, isolation. Like what if we have a bunch of individuals, but they never talk to each other. They don't create any VP relationships between each other. What happens? Well, according to the CDC, who surveyed over 3.4 million participants, they found that lo loneliness is associated with all forms mortality, like a 26% higher form of causes of death. That's like smoking a pack of cigarettes every single day. It's near equivalency there. It gets worse if you're living in social isolation, meaning you don't have anyone to talk to at home and you don't have anyone you talk to at work. So those type of people, and there's about 25% of people, according to surveys, that are in that kind of ballpark. So what also happens is your body will start to release cortisol and cortisol is a stress hormone that we've talked about before. And in the lonely state, your cortisol will lead to higher blood pressure, excess weight gain, muscle weakness, problems concentrating, 
obviously all of these things are not the things that are going to be able to give you energy to pay it forward. So we don't want to have individuals in isolation. We don't want individuals to be trying to do the, I'm, the egotistical thing. We want people relating in valued, connected teams. That's going to be the, the critical um, part of the science here. So let's look at teamwork. And uh, we're going to compare our work to horses. So an individual horse can pull 8,000 pounds of a load and by themselves. But however, if they team up with another horse, so if you've got two horses working together, they're going to be able to pull 24,000 pounds. That's more than double, it's triple the amount of weight. And if they're an experienced team, they can pull four times the weight of one horse can pull. So there's a synergistic benefit that happens for experienced teams that work together well. They can physically work harder. They can be more creative, more productive. They'll be more ethical. There's so many benefits to working in a team that's well. I mean, when you come into an engaged team environment, your energy just feels up and you feel excited about being part of it. So the science about community engagement, they feel this too. According to Gallup, there's a 23% share of wallet. What does that mean? So when a community feels that energy coming from your teams, they feel engaged and cared for, like, wow, this service is great at this restaurant. The, the shops are amazing and this place is clean. Everyone's friendly that they're, you're going to have 23% higher retention of, of your community that's, that's working with you. You're going to have 23% more of their purchasing power. You're going to get return uh, consuming, return purchases and things like that. So all of these financial benefits are indications that this is working, that this virtuous circle is being paid back. And it's all based on serotonergic outcomes that we've been talking about time and time again, that the serotonin creates these virtuous cycles that we can create within organizations. And that's the science that we're trying to encourage in creating a VP culture. So this paying it forward mentality really does work. So let's talk about Whole Foods. This is going to be a story about how Whole Foods went from one tiny grocery store in Austin, Texas, to a mega chain across the entire United States. And you guessed it, the core was creating a VP culture. The owner was really keen on, on, on engaging with his employees, treating them like they're important. Like that was the core of his business, was creating these teams of, of valued people. He would ask them what their ideas were. He had great communication skills. He engaged with them emotionally. He made sure that they were feeling um, adequately cared for that they were a part of the whole business that was important to him as the leader. So he brought that virtuous cycle to each one of the teams and those teams created great outcomes for the consumers and the consumers came to the store and they were they were not just excited about the, the, the natural foods and the organic things that they could get there, but they were excited about the whole atmosphere. They're like, these people are great. I get the energy. I'm, I'm behind the values and the purpose and where this company is going. And so they became fans. And so this store started spreading across the United States. And now every community virtually has a Whole Foods somewhere within their, within their community because they did such a great job in, in not only doing the, the financial aspect of it, but they realized that the financial aspect followed the, the great VP culture that they had created because they understood this principle of paying it forward, that their community would respond when they started that, that virtuous cycle of individual valuing the team, the teams valuing the community, the community valuing the organization, and on it goes. So that's the story of Whole Foods. Let's talk about a, a giant pharmaceutical firm was in a crisis. They were spent billions of dollars researching this one pharmaceutical uh, drug that they had been building, and they felt that it had a lot of potential. But they were in a crisis and they were getting close to the deadline that they had to submit all their data to the FDA. And they, quite, they, they were missing some components. It wasn't quite clicking yet. And they didn't know what was happening. So the team started getting really kind of, the management there was, was, was blaming and people were pointing fingers and the drama began and it started to expand. And people just didn't know how to pull it all together. So they hired a consultant and then the consultant did one critical shift. 
he helped them to change their communication from negative, like a three to one negative, to a three to one positive. So they started talking about gratitude, they started talking about how the, those ideas were good, how this potential is good. And that shift was one of the key shifts in communication is, do people feel valued in your emotional engagement, in your communication? So we talk, we'll talk about emotional engagement science, and that's a key component. Are you engaging with somebody in a positive way? And that positive cycle changed the team dynamic, and they started getting more creative because they were in less drama. They started being more um, diligent, and they were able to find that critical component that they were missing in their research that brought it all together, and they, were start, they started to have positive outcomes that they could bring to the FDA in their research. And then that drug went on to be one of the, the, the key drugs for this organization, for this uh, pharmaceutical firm, that made them millions and billions of dollars, actually, because this team was able to turn it around and pull off the research that they needed to do. So now let's talk about the discussion questions. Discussion question number one. How would you describe the difference between a friendship and an organization? What's the purpose of a friendship? What's the purpose of an organization? How does it feel to be just friends? How does it feel to be in an organization? Talk about those things. Let's look at the next question. What does it feel like to be on a team that increases your energy? We've all been on that great team that we've loved to be. What does it feel like when you show up on the team and everyone's glad you're there? What does it feel like? Let's look at the third question. Third question is, what company are you a fan of? What did they do to make you a fan? Like, I love these cameras that I use here. What did this company do to make me a fan? Well, it works well. So to talk about that, talk about how whatever brand that you love, whatever company, whatever restaurant you love, talk about what they did and how they make you feel when you interact with them. All right, so that brings us to the conclusion of this lesson of self, team, and community in the culture science group. And these are the three key stakeholder groups that have to, as we've been talking, pay the energy forward, pay the valuing forward. So it reciprocates to you. It'll reduce your burnout, it'll increase your satisfaction, it'll increase your energy and do all of those great things that come from having a VP culture when you interact with this thought process of these three key stakeholders working together in a synergistic way. So that's the end of lesson nine. And we thank you for participating with us in this lesson and we look forward to meeting you again in the next lesson. And this is actually the final lesson in the VP Culture Culture Science Unit. And in this unit, we focused on three key things that help you to create culture. Instead of just jumping into the skills, these are the three components of creating a culture that will put you in that category of the 30% success ratio that we, we talked about. Now, there are three key uh, techniques and, and methodologies that we're outlining here. First was what we talked about today, the key of understanding how the breakdown of your key st stakeholders work together, the leadership with the team, the teams with the community, and how that works together and how it creates different kind of neurological balances when they start to value each other. And then the second was we focused on key methodologies, how there are going to be key skills that you're going to be learning, like the value science, the personality science and the emotional science skills, they'll become habits and that they're time-based. You have to give people cues on how to work those into their life. And then we talked about how to handle time. The time is gonna be critical. If you don't set aside time, you're not gonna A, create habits, and B, you're not gonna be able to really immerse yourself in this material so that it becomes that habitualized activity within your world. And we also talked about the capabilities trap that talks about how time can be an enemy if you're not aware of the different dynamics of how productivity shifts and changes as you try to learn and improve. So it's those three key areas that we're, we've learned, the key stakeholders, the, the key time, and the key skills that you're gonna be learning in the upcoming lessons. The next lesson is gonna be personality science. So we'll start there and I'll see you in the next course.